Hello everyone. Happy New Year from SJU Faith. As we celebrate Mary, Mother of God, we are going to read from the Gospel of Luke. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told to them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all things reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope this message finds you joyfully and realistically ushering in a new year. Today we commemorate the oldest of the Marian feasts, Mary's vocation to be the mother of God. This was marked in the year 431 AD at the Council of Ephesus when Mary was declared to be the God-bearer, specifically giving birth to Jesus's humanity. So what might this day mean for us? It's seven days after the birth of Jesus. So Mary, the mother of God, is probably pretty tired, exhausted really, and trying to get her newborn to sleep. There's advice often given to new parents that goes, sleep when the baby is sleeping. And let me tell you how impossible this is around the excitement of a newborn child. Family is often visiting from out of town. People want to stop by with food. Friends are texting from all over the world. Our daughter Rose will turn three tomorrow, and I cherish the memories of her birth. It was freezing cold in St. Cloud when we checked in at 7 a.m., and I was seen by doctors and nurses around the clock. Rose was born the next day at 11 p.m., and every tear was one of total joy and intensity. I ate the best cheeseburger ever after her birth. I can't imagine going through that labor in a stable with animals surrounding me and then delivering the Son of God. There's a wonderful children's book called Goodnight Manger, which shows the afterbirth scene and how all Mary wants is to get her child, Jesus, to sleep. Joseph tries rocking him, but the donkeys and sheep are making all kinds of noises. A hen fixes the hay just right, but baby Jesus grabs it to play with it. Then the angels start singing loudly, shepherds show up with their flock, and what's next? A visit from three kings. And all Mary wants is for her child to sleep. I want to know if there was a midwife nearby that came to check up on Mary and how Jesus was breastfeeding, but naturally this is not in that story. While Mary is hailed, full of grace, let us also remember that Mary was a real person with aches and pains and feelings. In her vocation to motherhood, she was a human being who gave birth from her body to Jesus Christ. So Mary can relate to us in our anticipation, anxieties, unexpected that we may feel, especially around a new year. She knows what it means to have a calling and to live it wholeheartedly, despite fear and doubt and uncertainty. And we too have a vocation, especially today, not all to parenthood, but to live with Christ within us. On this solemnity, when we remember Mary as God-bearer, let us consider how we will bear God in our lives this year. Will we support him as he grows in our midst, as he casts down the mighty from their thrones? Will we join him as he lifts up the lowly? Will we help him fill the hungry with good things? My husband, Chris, often reminds me of a line by Jim Keenan, who is a moral theologian at Boston College. And the line is this, mercy is the willingness to enter into another's chaos. God mercifully enters into our chaos by becoming human in Jesus. Mary 
allows this mercy to happen. Let us renew our trust to call on Mary, to allow the Christ child into our lives, no matter how chaotic or how many sleepless nights there may be.